Our operation is small, but there's a lot of potential for aggressive expansion. So which of you fine gentlemen would like to join our team? Oh, there's only one spot open right now, so we're gonna have tryouts. Here's the thing, I'm gonna tell you something that is very hard to believe. <laughs> this i5 13600K beats the Ryzen 9 7950X in some of the benchmarks. No, no, no. At half the price, which is absolutely mental. But do you know what else is mental? My segue to the sponsored segment. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. In a moment, we're gonna be looking at some of the benchmarks, but we have to look at the the processor specs to see what's changed and why is this 13600k so different. So basically one of the main things that's changed with the 13600k compared to the 12600k is that we've gained extra for efficiency cores which now is at 14 compared to the 10 cores on 12600k. And two years ago if I told you that i5 will have 14 cores you wouldn't have believed me. We're also going to be comparing this processor to the 7600x from Ryzen, which is the closest one to the price of this one and costs around $300, slightly cheaper. But also I wanna throw in the mix, the Ryzen 9 5900X from previous generation, the 12 core CPU, which will kind of match the core count of this CPU because the Ryzen will have 12 cores, 24 threads, will have 14 cores and 20 threads. So the max turbo frequency is 5.1 gigahertz, extra 200 megahertz compared to the 12600K, but the 7600X boosts even higher at 5.3 gigahertz and the 5900X 4.8 gigahertz. The 13th gen also supports PCIe Gen 5 and we have 20 PCIe lanes, which is very, very interesting. Not a lot of people talk about that compared to the Ryzen 7000 series or previous Ryzen's as well. They have 24 usable PCIe lanes, which is Gen 5 on the 7600X and Gen 4 on the 5900X. In terms of RAM, it supports both DDR4 and DDR5, which is the same on 12th gen, but Ryzen 7000 only supports DDR5. Our L3 cache has been increased by four megabytes, but we're still eight megabytes short compared to the 7600X from Horizon. L2 cache though now has increased by 10.5 megabytes, which is doubling it from 12600K. And compared to the Ryzen 7600X, we have 14 more megabytes L2 cache. The base power is 125 watt TDP, which is exactly the same on the 12600K, but the turbo boost can go up to 181 watts compared to Intel's specifications. But I only saw up to 148 watts pulled from a Z790 motherboard with no limitations and just letting the motherboard do its job, which has been increased by about 35 watts compared to the 12600K, which is quite a lot. And we're pulling still more power than the 7600X that pulls roughly around 120 watts from the socket. The Ryzen 9 5900X pulls 132 watts, which is still less than our 13600K. The 13600K has the same iGPU as the 12600K, which is very, very good. You'll see in a moment. The 7600X also has an iGPU, which is the Radeon Graphics with two graphics cores, but the 5900X has no integrated graphics. The 13 and the 12th gen are exactly on the same node, but the 7600X is on five nanometers compared to the 10 nanometers on the 12th and 13th gen and seven nanometers on the 5900X. Before we go into the benchmark results, let's have a look at the price now here. The 13600K CPU costs $329.99, by the way, I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing in the description below through those links because they're constantly changing and I have a feeling that AMD will knock their prices even further down. And also the 12600K from previous generation might be even cheaper now. So that's that. But at the time of me making this video, these are the prices. 
If we're looking at the motherboard RAM combo, uh, the motherboard I've taken exactly the same motherboard brand, ASUS ProArt, but the different chipsets, whether it's a Z690, there probably will be a Z790 ProArt as well. Then on Ryzen, we're looking at the X670E ProArt and on the 59, 100x we're looking at the x570 pro art we're using the same ddr5 on 12th gen and 13th gen and the 7000 of ryzen which is the kingston fury beast rgb 64 gigabytes 5200 mega transfers per second and then on the 5900x we're using ddr4 the same manufacturer of ram but 3600 mega transfers cl18 so when we look at the platform costs with the cpu we can see that the 12600k is 65 dollars cheaper compared to the 13th gen which is 6.3 percent cheaper actually and the 7600x is a 19 dollars more expensive on the platform which is 1.7% more expensive, which is not good news for AMD right now, but it's also due to the X670E motherboard being a little bit more featureful, therefore costing a little bit more, making the cost a little bit more expensive. But usually the X670 and 670E motherboards are a little bit more expensive. So if you look at the, to get the same features, it will be slightly more expensive on the AMD side. And also the 5900X is about $228 more expensive just because of the CPU price and the motherboard price. Now, I do understand that the X570 Pro Art motherboard is EOL, end of life. So it's very hard to get and therefore the prices are massively inflated. But if you do get a similar spec as the Z690 kind of motherboard with 10 gigabit Ethernet, the Thunderbolt ports and so on, then it is very, very expensive still on the AMD 5000 series. Uh, platform. So now when you know the difference in the price, we need to look at if the performance matches up with the price increase or decrease. But before that, let's quickly look at our test setup then. For AMD 7000, we're using ASUS X670 Pro Art Creator Wi-Fi for the motherboard RAM. We're using their 2x32GB DDR5 5200 mega transfers per second Kingston Viewer Beast RGB. And that's exactly the same on the 13th gen. In terms of the 12th gen, I was actually running 48 800 mega transfers per second because they're slightly all the benchmarks result for gpu we're using asus rtx 3090 tuf and that's the same across the board the cooler on the amd 7000 is asus rog strix lc2 360 millimeter aio and i've also replaced the fans with three fantex t30 fans and that's exactly the same on the intel side but we're using the fantex glacier one 360 millimeter cooler which is exactly the same cooler just different plant brand it's the same asetic cooler but we're using the same t30 fans from fantex so i have exactly the same cooling system in here and the other system is down there for os ssd we're using cardia c441 terabyte on the 7000 ryzen platform and the project ssd on amd is msi m480 spatium 2 terabyte drive for intel we're using samsung 980 pro 1 terabyte drive for the os ssd and the project drive or benchmark drive is samsung 980 pro 2 terabyte drive for psu we're using corsair hx 1000 on the amd 7000 and deep cool bq 1000m on the 13th gen and 12th gen in terms of the ryzen 5000 series we're using msi x570 sa's max for the motherboard we're using two times 32 gigabytes kingston fury renegade rgb 3600 megahertz for cooler we're using rog rugin 360 millimeter aio which is exactly the same as the cooler maybe a generation older pump but the cold plate and the red rad are exactly the same and for the os ssd we're using cardia c440 and two terabyte fire q 534 the project drive and the psu is a corsair hx 1000 watt power supply now the power consumption and this is tested on the citibench r23 and the multi-core score test 10 minute test we can see that the 13600k pulls 148 watts from the socket just a comment here this is letting the motherboard do its job I've literally just enabled XMP on the motherboard and enabled iGPU. I haven't touched any of the like overclocking features or so on. It's just letting it go there. The only thing that I 
did adjust was the power window is set to maximum time frame so it's just pushed to that maximum speed as long as possible whatever the uh, motherboard bios allows but the other power limits are just default what the motherboard comes with that's just what you can expect when you just throw your cpu into one of the motherboards from asus gigabyte msi or something like that then that's how much power it can draw but depending on the manufacturer as well but on the asus z790i strix motherboard I can see 148 watts pulled from the socket, which is quite a lot, as you can see, compared to the 5900X, the 12 core from previous generation, which only pulls 132 watts. And is about 35 watts more compared to the previous generation, 12600K, as you can see. And the 7600X actually pulls also 28 watts less, which is quite a bit less, actually. So that means that in order to get into this processor platform, we do need need a little bit of a higher cooler compared to the previous generation 12th gen CPU because we're just pulling more wattage from the socket so we're not just gonna get away with any of the just cheapest $20 coolers maybe we need to spend slightly more $30 $40 to get a little bit of a better cooler now 148 watts isn't still unbearable but you do need a little bit of a better cooler compared to the 113 watts from previous generation which you could cool pretty much with anything but at the same time this is 100% utilization from Cinebench R23 which as a creator you're not gonna see that very likely unless you're doing blender cycles or something like that but even video exports or some other multi-threaded applications won't 100% utilize it or will utilize it in bursts which is not gonna be that big of a deal. Let's have a look at Cinebench R23 and here we can see that we've gained about 2.5% compared to the 12th gen and in multi-core performance we're 27% faster compared to the previous generation. That's absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous increase. And compared to the 7600X, we're absolutely slaughtering it by about 37%, which just shows that the six cores, 12 threads aren't as good as 14 cores and 20 threads. It obviously makes sense. But interestingly, the 5900X is about 10.8% slower in the multi-core score and 17.1% slower in the single-core score. The Ryzen 7600X is pretty much neck to neck with the 13600K in terms of single core performance but average is about 1% slower. In Geekbench 5 the 12600K is about 25% slower in the multi-core score and about 4% slower in the single core score. So we haven't gained that much in the single core score but a lot in the multi-core score. Interestingly the 7600X is about 8% faster in the single core score but about 34% slower in the multi-core score. The 5900X is about 12% slower in the single core score and 15.5% slower in the multi-core score. Now Blender. The 12600K is 30 to 34% slower in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes compared to the 13600K, which is ridiculous increase in performance over the generations. The 7600X again gets absolutely slaughtered by the 13600K by being about 32 to 33% slower. Now, interestingly, the 12 core 5900X is 3 to 6% slower in all of the same benchmarks compared to the i5 13600K. That's just ridiculously impressive multi-core performance. Let's move on to Photoshop. The 12600K is about 11% slower in the overall score. The general score is 21% slower, which is quite a lot. But the 7600X isn't that much slower here in Photoshop because it has very, very good single core speeds and boost to 5.3 gigahertz which Photoshop loves. Photoshop loves very, very fast scores and is not as multi-threaded but slightly threaded uh, application. But still the 7600X is about 3.7% slower in the overall score and about 11% slower in the general score. But looking at the 5900X 12 core processor from last generation, it's 17.6% slower in the overall score, which is just amazing, amazing performance per dollar from the 13600K. But when looking at the general score, pretty much 30% slower than the 13600K. Let's move on to Lightroom Classic, another photo editing application. And we can see that the 12600K is about 25% 
slower in overall score the active score interestingly hasn't changed so much just so you know active and passive scores what they mean is active is when you're actually working on your photos developing them flicking between photos and moving the faders and you know adjusting colors and all sorts of contrast and so on but the passive score means when you're putting photos together like merging photos exporting photos or putting them like into a panorama or doing something like that that's when it can use um a lot of multi-core aspects of the processor and uses a lot of the cores. So the better passive score usually means you've got more cores, but the cores also need to be fast, basically. So here we can see that the 12600K is 36% slower in the passive score, which is just ridiculous and really shows in the export of the photos. The 7600X is about 15% slower in the overall score and 11 and 17% slower in the active and passive scores respectively. 5900X is 25% slower in the overall score and 32% slower in the passive score and about 9% slower in the active score. Let's move on to video editing and Adobe Premiere Pro. Here I do want to make another note that the 12600K benchmark results are at 4000 megatransfers per second uh, RAM speed, not 5200 megatransfers. So there is a few percent kind of still on the table on the 12600K. Gap between 13th gen and 12th gen will be slightly slower when using the faster RAM. But regardless, we're about 7.5% slower in the extended overall score and about 9.6% slower in the standard overall score. Now compared to the 7600X, which is 29% slower in the extended overall score and standard overall score is 36% slower. The 7600X gets absolute slothering here in the Premiere Pro benchmark. And if you look at the extended live playback score, which is 47% slower, and the standard live playback score, which is 57% slower, yes, it's more than twice as fast on the 13600K. You can see that 13600K is an obvious choice for video editing in Premiere Pro. And compared to the 5900X, we're 21% slower in the extended overall score and 28% slower in the standard overall score, which are just ridiculous results. And you're wondering how on earth can the 13600K get such good performance results? And that's to do with the iGPU, if you didn't know, that UHD 770 iGPU inside there has killer media engines inside which can decode and encode some of the footage so if you're using some of the h264 and h265 codecs on the timeline it can hardware decode them super super smoothly which gives a ridiculous live playback speed in the standard and extended scores for the 13th gen it's very very similar score in the live playback score on the 12th gen but the 13th gen takes it a small step even further. But just to put it in perspective, how ridiculous this card here is in Premiere Pro, if we are looking at the 7950X, then we're still beating the 7950X with our 13600K. The extended overall score is 1223 on the 7950X compared to the 1295 on the 3600K. As you can see on the screen, the overall scores are better than the 7950X. That's just absolutely ridiculous that you can get that type of performance from the i5 13600K, but that's highly to do with the iGPU inside there and getting the live playback scores very, very high. So don't be fooled over here. Basically everything else apart from the live playback score will be better on the 7950X but overall scores are still very very much faster on the 13600K which just shows that the iGPU there is so so important for video editors. Moving on to After Effects, the 12600K is about 13% slower compared to the 13600K. The multi-core score is 25% slower and the 7600X is 10% slower than the 13600K, but about 30% slower in the multi-core score. The 5900X 12-core processor is overall 17.3% slower than the 13600K, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, a quick note about this benchmark in DaVinci Resolve here, it doesn't really use uh, the iGPU kind of benefits as much as Premiere Pro uh, benchmark there. So you're not gonna see that big of a difference there it really uses the CPU side of things. But if you do use any of the H.264 and 5 codecs in DaVinci Resolve, then the iGPU will give you like extra something 
X amount of performance. And I would highly recommend you to go to DaVinci Resolve and untick the NVIDIA decoders or media engines and only use the Intel QuickSync just because the Intel uh, media engines inside the CPU have more codecs that it supports on hardware acceleration than the NVIDIA side of things even when we're running RTX 1390 or even 1490. I'd still recommend using the Intel ones just because it supports more codecs and you'll get faster timeline playback basically. But the scores then, the 12600K is about 15% slower in the overall score and the 7600X is about 4.5% slower in the extended overall score. The 5900X is 19% slower in the overall score, that's the extended one, and 21% slower in the standard overall score. And lastly, the V-Ray, the 12600K is 27% slower, the 7600X is 31% slower, and the 5900X is actually 1.5% faster than the 13600K. For V-Ray, those 12 performance cores from AFD 5000 series processors are very, very good. So in conclusion then, is it worth it for Kratos and how does it compare in the market with some of the other similarly priced CPUs? Now you can see very, very easily that it's hard to recommend AMD compared to this Intel, just because Intel has so much more performance per dollar. AMD is about 1.7% more expensive overall to get onto the platform, but performs, you know, five to 30 three percent slower depending on the application so whether you're doing video editing photo editing or even 3d for this price point amd really needs to drop its price of the 7600x to about 250 dollars maybe something like that then it kind of starts to be competitive for the price with intel side of things and that's just talking about performance per dollar so intel gets a clear clear win over here and actually intel punches way above its weight class in terms of the performance as you can see we're beating some of the ryzen 9s I mean, pretty much all of the Ryzen 9s from the previous generation, I could pull those 5950X benchmarks as well, and they were faster in a lot of the things. Just go check out my 13900K review so you can see the 5950X benchmarks over there. But I didn't include them in here just because that 5950X is so much more expensive than this 13600K that even if you can afford the 5950X, you'd probably get something like the 13700K or 13900K instead, and you'd get much more performance so that's why it wasn't like worth performing here the 5900x is roughly about 70 or 60 dollars more expensive but a bit closer to the price that's why we're comparing this but the 13600k actually competes with much more expensive cpus from amd which is just impressive to see from the 13600k one big downside here for the 13600k though is the power draw it actually uses or pulls more power than the 5900x or 5950x even in some of the cases if BBO is not enabled and that is a, a slight concern that you have to just think about when buying this processor which means that you just can't get away with any of the very very low end coolers now if you get a mid range cooler you're gonna get away with it no problem but at the same time i'm thinking the ryzen 7600x and the 13600k they're very much in the similar kind of cooler bracket of the things the 13600k requires slightly better cooling and uh, to pull that you know 148 watts but regardless it's a little bit of a jump up compared to the previous generation now i'm curious to see what the 13400 or 13500 and 13600 cpus will be like at a you know a little bit of cheaper price and the, the less of a power draw we'll see how well they perform if you're asking me do you recommend the 13600k for creators? I'd say yes, absolutely. It's so impressive performance and so impressive even at the price point. You get so much more performance than anything else similarly priced on the market. One last very important thing I want to mention is the memory controller. Now the memory controller has been improved since the 12th gen and now supports up to 5600 megatransfers per second compared to the 4800 megatransfers per second on the 12th gen. Which means that if you've got an XMP on 
a RAM stick that runs, you know, 5600 mega transfers, you can run very, very good and gear one on, on them both. So the memory controller has been improved, but that's per channel. Okay. So it means two sticks. If you run four sticks, because a lot of the motherboards support four sticks, what you can't actually find out and what Intel doesn't tell you is that when you're running four sticks of XMP, you are actually going to be capped at 4,000 mega transfers per second with the memory controller. That doesn't mean that you can't run them faster, but, you know, official st stable spec kind of from the CPU or from the memory controller is 4,000 mega transfers per second. So if you do want to install more than 64 gigabytes of RAM, and you know, occupy four channels and have 128 gigabytes, for example, then just buy the cheapest RAM possible because you're not gonna be running the XMP and they will run at 4,000 mega transfers per second or just make your memory run 4,000 mega transfers per second, which is a little bit of a bummer, but at the same time, it's still better than what AMD has because AMDs will run at 3,200 mega transfers per second when four sticks have it being installed so just so you know so if you want to pick up one of these 13600k then check out the links in the description below as well as the 12600k which might be even more affordable and can be a little bit more or better bang for buck if you want to check it out i'm going to leave it in the description below and very importantly if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck create a pc and your budget is roughly from 750 dollars to five thousand dollars then i've got pc build guides in the description below for you to check out there's a four part series pick up the video that's closer to your budget and then you can configure the budget and the parts to your liking so if you're looking to build yourself something new go check them out in the description below thanks guys for watching let me know what you think in the comment section below and i'll see you next time bye bye